just before six in the morning. We're starting our journey back home from Beach Mountain. Nine plus hours. And curvy roads and pitch black. It's your Sunday morning horror movie. About four hours later, we are in South Carolina and we just saw a billboard for our first roadside attraction stop of the day. We're heading towards Bowman, South Carolina. And it sure doesn't look like there's a lot over here. I'll give you a hint where we're heading. There's all corn stalks over here. I don't know if they're in a pattern of any sort. Look at that. Welcome farmlands on earth. We're at the Bowman town limit. <laughs> we are here. The UFO Welcome Center. And we saw this on a billboard on 26. All the way over here. This is in somebody's backyard. So this thing is probably a good 30 feet tall. UFO Welcome Center, Bowman, Planet Earth. Space people only, only. Enter at your own risk. I don't know if the space people were eating takeout in styrofoam containers. And if you're wondering, pictures are okay. Entrance and cargo bay. Let's take a look. We've got like this missile out front. So this is a tourist curiosity located in Bowman, South Carolina, built in the backyard of Jody Pendiverse. It's a 42 foot wide flying saucer, 13 meters, built out of plywood, or wood, fiberglass and plastic. It's on a powered ramp and it will raise and lower with motors. The big saucer was built in 1994. And then there's another saucer in the back that was built in 2003. Entrance and cargo bay is over here. I'm not sure what we're trying to track there. I don't know. So, this guy lives over here. I'm just going to do my best not to get shot. But there's a tip jar over here. Space people only. Register your planet inside. Well, this is about as far as I'm gonna go. And I wanna put some tips into that box. But you can see inside. There's a toilet and sink in there for the aliens. Extra shirt, I used to need them. And there's blankets in here and... You even have electrical outlets. Sure, the aliens need the electrical outlets. A lot of paint. <laughs> UFO. When oh, there's a ladder, in case the aliens need to climb up. This was incredible. And we've got a UFO car here too. Some aliens on the car. UFO on the back. Oh, but wait. But wait. What's back here? Is that the other craft? I think that might be the other spacecraft. All right, UFO Welcome Center. We're going to get back on the road. Tut tut, Christopher Robin. Looks like rain. Peaches. Literally going to the country gonna eat me a lot of peaches. We're about to go over this bridge into Savannah, Georgia. That looks like it's like a bridge to heaven or something. Holy cow, it's so crazy looking. Look at this craziness. With the clouds. Oh, aside from the fire truck up ahead. Wow. Oh, yeah. We're doing it. Dad. This 
city of Savannah welcomes you. What's the word? Thunderbird. So we stopped in Savannah, Georgia, to see a couple of different things. But we're in Chippewa Square, a very famous movie location that the movie prop has since been removed. So Chippewa Square commemorates the valor of American arms in the Battle of Chippewa, Canada, 1813. And we have a statue. If we come around to this side of the square, that's where we find an older Forrest Gump sitting on a bench waiting for a bus. My name's Forrest, Forrest Gump. And uttering the very famous phrase, Mama said, life is like a box of chocolates. The bench that sat here for the filming of the movie, even though the movie was supposed to take place elsewhere, actually filmed in Savannah, Georgia, but the bench is in the Savannah, Georgia uh, History Museum. Now there's 24 similar type squares around Savannah, Georgia to explore. Savannah, Georgia is one of the oldest cities in America, also one of the most haunted cities in America. Also, um, three of them were paved over in recent, you know, construction. You know. So there's only 21, I believe, left. Some of the architecture of these buildings, very reminiscent of New Orleans. Here's some folks, very spirited conversation over there. But right here is Savannah Theater. The Piano Men, featuring Billy Joel music, is playing this weekend. That's a big bell. Look at those classic cars outside of the police station. We've come up to Colonial Park. Erected by the Savannah Chapter of Daughters American Revolution, 1913. In memory of Patriots of War for the American Revolution, 1775 to 1783, that are resting in this colonial cemetery. Look at some of these. It was the burying grounds for the city from 1750 until it was closed in 1853. Among the distinguished dead who rest here are Archibald Bullock, first president of Georgia, and you can read the rest. This is really impressive how well kept everything is. This is the grave of Edward Green Malbone, the foremost painter of miniatures. 1807. This is the gravesite of Hugh McCall, Georgia historian. This is the resting place of William Scarborough, promoter of the first transoceanic steamship. James Johnson, Georgia's first newspaper publisher and printer. This is the resting place of Button Gwinnett, who signed the Declaration of Independence. It's chained off over here. He died a year after he signed it. Wow. This is the resting place of Archibald Bullock, first president of Georgia. And here's Joseph Clay, patriot. So also, in this section of the cemetery, are many victims of the Great Yellow Fever epidemic of 1820. Nearly 700 Savannah residents died that year, including two physicians. The next stop, we're gonna get something to eat at the Pirate's House. Part of the structure for the Pirate's House is the oldest in all of Georgia. And we're coming in. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. We're gonna sit down for a buffet and maybe take a tour of everything. Aside from the Coke and sweet teas, we have pirate's treasure in the table, as well as this placement with the history of the pirate's house. And here are some ghost stories because it is said that the pirate's house is haunted. From the herb house to the captain's room, each room feels uniquely haunted. Large marmalade, some butter, and some biscuits. We have a model of the city of Savannah sailing ship. Here's an oven that I don't think they're cooking our food on today, hopefully. It's One-Eyed Jack. And the cellar. 
it looks terrifying. According to legend, this stairway at one time led to the entrance of a tunnel that ran from the old rum settler beneath the pirate house to the banks of Savannah River a block away. Many able bodied men drinking in carefree abandon and what now is the captain's room were carried, drugged, and unconscious. Through the tunnel, the sailing ships anchored in the harbor and was shanghaied to the shorthanded ship's masters to complete their cruise. This is the Cape Santa Elena. There is an awful lot of glare. And then we have another entrance down here. Super creepy. Look at that. This underground chamber with ancient walls of handmade brick were uncovered by workmen in 1962 during renovation. I don't know what it could have been used for. Maybe pirate treasure. This plate represents everything in the South. We got fried chicken, fried catfish, fried okra, some green beans, dirty rice, and mac and cheese. Banana cake. You can choose for me the banana cake or banana pudding for dessert with the buffet. Because today is bananas. Inside the Pirate's House, they also have some of the oldest pages of Treasure Island. They have them framed here. It's the treasure room. Some of the pages that are really kind of aged at this point. It looks like waterlogged also. One of the pirates that are named in the book is actually said to have been haunting the upstairs of this establishment, which can't seem to be true if this book is fiction. <laughs> we found the pirate's chest and it's full of lollipops. Here's some memorabilia. The pirates. We have a strapping gentleman here carved out of wood. And upstairs, there's a pirate's gift store. Come to the dark side. So much awesomeness. I love that statue. 16 bucks. You can get this gun knife combo. Wow. Make poor decisions. The pirate tells all. How about a joke, pirate? Arr, so you want to hear a joke, do you? Sure. Well, I suppose I can share a bit of my humor. But you better laugh loudly, or else. So a sailor meets me friend, the legendary pirate Lucky Joe in a bar. He's called Lucky Joe, see, because he has a peg leg, a hook for a hand, and a patch over his right eye. The sailor asked Lucky Joe, so how'd you end up with the peg leg? And Joe replied, once while sailing upon a stormy sea, I was swept overboard and a shark bit me leg off. Well, the sailor, he was quite impressed by the pirate story. So he asked, what about your hook? Well, Lucky Joe answered, we took an enemy ship captive, and a rogue cut me hand off with his sword. That's incredible, cried the sailor. So then tell me, what happened to your eye? Lucky Joe chuckled, ha ha, yes, a seagull dropping fell into me eye. And that blinded you, asked the sailor? No, Lucky Joe replied, it was my first day with a new hook. <laughs> by the way, the pirate house is located right by Bay Street, which overlooks water over there and the sign in front of us is telling us that we've missed bacon fest today some hours later finally have returned to florida i am back home that was a heck of a trip i love making those road trips where you can fit in any little of roadside attractions or seeing some of the details in the areas that you're passing through but i gotta be honest i hate paying the price afterwards for adding that extra time onto your journey. So we left this morning at six o'clock, um, all the way up top the mountain, and then ended up getting home sometime after seven o'clock p.m. And uh, that is a long drive. Awesome weekend. We broke this up into a bunch of different um, chunks here. So hopefully you guys enjoy the whole experience. Uh, thanks a lot for coming along. Thank you very much for all of your likes and your comments and your subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys.